Hey guys, Dustin, Skidoo Junkie here. Uh, thanks for coming back out to check out another vintage Skidoo Spotlight. Today we're going to talk about the 2005 Skidoo Mog Z. So if you think back to what happened in 1993, it was the beginning of an era for Skidoo. They started their muscle sled era with their flagship model, the 1993 Skidoo Mog Z. That continued from 1993 to 2003. In 2003, there were two, two big things that happened for Skidoo. It was the end of the Mach Z in a triple CK3 chassis as we knew it. And it was also the beginning of the 2003 Rev. So in 2003, nobody really wanted to talk about the Mach Z. I think there were less than 50 of them made. Everyone was oohing and on over the new Rev. So the Rev came out. Um, the biggest version that you could buy that was the 800 Twin. The rev chassis, what it gave in ride and handling, it took away from top end. And for that, the flagship model Mach-Z guys, they were going nuts. They wanted the Mach-Z back. So, you know, we talked earlier about the 93 plus CFI being Skidoo's first attempt at fuel injection. Well, they didn't make another attempt until 2004 in the 600 SDI semi-direct injected sled. The 600 SDI was a phenomenal motor. It offered great reliability, pretty good fuel consumption, and um, they just worked. So Skidoo continued that in 2004, and then in 2005, they gave back what all the muscle sled guys wanted, the 05 Mach-Z. It came with a big bore twin, and this was a very high-tech and complicated two-stroke engine. It made a lot of horsepower, somewhere between 170, 175 horsepower stock, it was semi-direct injected, had a liquid-cooled bottom end, 995 cc displacement. Um, they were complex from the fact that not only did it have a uh, electronically controlled rave valves, it had uh, two sets of injectors, low-speed injectors, high-speed injectors. It had two fuel pumps. It had a vacuum fuel pump from the factory that was un mounted underneath the engine that fed a reservoir in the top of the fuel tank that. Uh, a high pressure fuel pump pressurized the fuel rail from there. So these sleds were rocket ships. Arguably the fastest, if not one of the fastest production snowmobiles that were made. It was in the Rev chassis or the RT chassis. You could say a little bit wider stance, um, wider bodied sled, different bulkhead, but uh, they handled fairly well. You know, some guys that, that hated on them for being a little bit heavy, but what where they were heavy, they made up for, more than made up for in the horsepower department. So, you know, like all good things, when you, you come out with that and the much new technology in one year, there's gonna be growing pains, right? So one of the main things that guys were noticing was that when the fuel tank would get low and they were making long, wide open pulls across the lake, the um, vacuum pump couldn't keep up keeping that fuel pressure reservoir in the, in the fuel tank fed for the high pressure fuel pump and it would starve the engine for fuel and cause the guys to burn down. So there was more than a handful of engine related failures, fuel pump, fuel pressure related failures the first year of production. And so about halfway through the season, Skidoo brought the O5s back and they had an update kit where they put a 12 volt facet fuel, electronic fuel pump underneath the engine in place of the vacuum pump. And that, for the most part, seemed to solve most of the fuel uh, pressure-related engine failure issues right up until the point where those facet fuel pumps would fail. And the problem with that was that nobody knew that there was no telltale signs, no check engine lights, no engine stuttering, um, you know, when that fuel pump was gonna fail. So, one day, that was in 2008, November of 2008, a good friend of mine, Jack Murray, who owned the Skidoo dealership that I worked for, he had an 05 Moxie that he trail rode himself. He'd also ordered a new, new 08 800 XP. The X, XP chassis was gonna be lightweight. There was a lot of discussion. That it was gonna be a lot faster chassis than the Rev chassis. So everyone kind of wanted to know, you know, which, which sled was actually gonna be faster. Was an 800 gonna be able to hang with the 995 SDI? or was the 995 SDI gonna remain king? So in the first week of December of 2007, Jack had taken delivery of his 08 XP, and he also had his 05 Mach-Z. 
long story short, I was up in uh, Hayward, Wisconsin at the time, and uh, Jack wasn't there. I kind of wanted to see for myself. We're friends like that, so not only did I take his 05 Mog Z out on the lake, I took his 08 XP out on the lake as well, and we were going to drag race him to see who's faster. The 08 XP was brand new. We wanted to put a few miles on it. The, the uh, 05 Mog Z had been sitting all summer, so I wanted to put some fresh gas in it and, and heat cycle the engine a couple times. So I took off on the 05 Mog Z across the lake. We only put a couple gallons of gas in it, and guess what? That 12 volt uh, facet fuel pump failed. When the sled rolled to a stop going across the lake, I broke through the ice and uh, I sunk his 05 Mog Z. I was in full leathers, helmet, whole nine yards on the lake by myself, unstaked, unmarked. Foolish, most foolish thing I've ever done in my entire life. It took about 10 seconds for that sled to go underwater. Um, I finally, uh, I was treading water with my helmet, leathers, gloves, boots, whole nine yards on. And I finally chipped off a chunk of ice big enough that I could slide underneath my knees and make myself buoyant enough to pull myself up on the ice. And I crawled on my belly for 200 feet where I got to good enough ice where I could stand up and walk and I ran to shore. At that point there I sat and I waited for my friends to realize that I'd been gone long enough that I was not coming back. Um, my suit froze up, zippers froze up. Um, I was I sat there along the shore for probably 15 or 20 minutes before they finally came to get me. Uh, his sled was gone. We looked for it for multiple days on end with ice augers and underwater cameras, dive recovery teams, could never find it. So long story short, I had a brand new 2007 Mach ZX, had 140 miles on it that I had to give to my friend Jack to make up for the sled of his that I lost. Um, as luck would have it, the 08X, 800 XP was not as fast as the 05 Mach Z. Um, but, you know, as winter went on, guys were getting a couple years on those facet 12 volt fuel pumps and there were several reports of failures. Well, what, that failure almost cost me my life and my own foolishness. So I took it upon myself to develop the first fuel pressure gauge kit for the 05 to 07 Mach Zs. Um, I probably sold three or 400 of them over the course of several years. I still get phone calls to this day of guys wanting uh, parts and pieces to put one together. I could tell you the auto meter part number for every piece, the, the length of the fuel line that we use, the T, the fitting style, size, everything. I mean, there for a while I had bought Jags and Summit out of the Autometer 3321 fuel pressure gauges and uh, Autometer was shipping them to me direct. But uh, had a lot of fun on the 0507 Mach Zs. Most of you guys remember Dale Larson and uh, Dave Dunn developed the Big Thunder Nitrous kits for them. They sold a bunch of them. This motor loved nitrous. I mean, it gobbled nitrous. Um, most guys were running, you know, a 75 to 100 horse shot on them. Some guys were running two-stage systems on them. I believe Cliff Randall is still running a, uh, a nitrous system on his Mach Z today. But uh, a lot of fun. The engines themselves were overcomplicated. If you were going to trail ride one, you probably planned on 3,000 to 3,500 miles before you'd have a connecting rod failure. And, and if you were lucky, you would save the case. If not, the engine was junk. They had a monoblock on them, so they were costly to fix. You know, you had a thousand bucks in replating a monoblock. Um, just, Skidoo had actually developed this engine for many, many years. I think Craig Marchbank has got the first prototype 995 SDI. And if I remember right, it's date stamp 1999. So that kind of tells you how long Skidoo was r and in this engine. A um, lot of fun. I, uh, I probably owned seven or eight of them just because they were, they were so much fun to ride. They were so fast, turned a lot of heads, and you could drag race anything on the lake and hang with them in stock form. I had them stock. I had them with nitrous. Um, this particular sled is near and dear to me, probably one of my favorites in my collection. Another sled that found me, uh, this sled, I bought in 2006 um, from a guy in Canada. I had to meet him at a truck stop outside of uh, Detroit and paid him in cash. The odometer on the sled said uh, 1.8 miles. I kind of questioned it by looking at the sled, whether if it was new or not, 
but it was a unique enough sled that I knew I kind of wanted it for my collection because this is serial number one. This is the first 05 Mog Z to roll off the assembly line. It has got some different stuff on it than what the full production models have. Some of the parts up in the front, the air intake, they're actually fiberglass where the production models were plastic. Um, this particular sled, I was right about my premonition that this sled not being brand new. When I got it with 1.8 miles on it, it still had the vacuum pump mounted underneath the engine, so it needed the updates. So I took it to a dealership up in Northern Illinois and had them do the warranty updates. <clears throat> and it kind of threw up a red flag that, that this sled had never been warranty registered with Skidoo at all. So come to find out, this sled had never been on the snow and it had 8,000 miles on the computer. I don't remember the exact hours, but upon further investigation, when you tip this sled on its side, every joint and seam on the underside of it is caulked in black RTV silicone. So what that means is this is a, was one of Skidoo's test tank sleds. So the test tank sleds, they'll, they'll pluck random sleds off the assembly line and they will submerge the back end in a glorified horse trough. They'll hook a fuel cell to it. They'll hook a mechanical mechanism to the throttles to run the motor through its RPM ranges and run it for days or weeks on end without stopping, uh, just as a way of testing and, and verification, validation. Um, so, like I said, this sled still had the vacuum pump on it with 8,000 miles on it. The reason it didn't have an engine failure is because it was hooked to a fuel cell. Never once was it starved for fuel. So I actually rode this sled. It's got uh, 15,000, I think two or 300 miles on it. At 14,800 miles, I took the engine apart because I'd not touched it. And it, and it wasn't because it wasn't running, it was because I wanted to see why it still was. And it had a little bit of some, it had some different pistons and stuff in it than, um, than what all the other 995s that I had taken apart had. They were a, a vendor that Skidoo's used, so I knew that they were original, and you could tell that it had never been taken apart before. But uh, like I said, this one is, is a little bit unique, a little special, and um, had a lot of fun with it. I love this sled. They're timeless, still arguably one of the fastest, if not the fastest, production snowmobile ever made. Appreciate you coming out today. Thanks.